What all does a single player game need, aside from a singular player? Well that's right, a game. And that is currently something that I don't have. So what magical, mystical journey do I go down this time to fix this obvious issue? In multiplayer games, the players are the enemies, and the maps are simply a backdrop, but we aren't so lucky for single player games. As a result of this pretty obvious fact, I need to add some gameplay mechanics, since well, I have neither a game or play. Addressing the first issue, that being that I don't have a game, I set up the usual first person features, that being Bean and Q's. So you can do the pew pew in the pew game you bought. You know, very important. Now that we have a game, we still need to add play, but one tiny issue. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to designing games. A game design document? Never heard of it. So ignoring my incompetence, I start adding in features that I know every tactical FPS game would need, like uh, doors. I heard doors are very important because they separate rooms and stuff, and make environments interactive. You would expect doors to be a pretty easy thing to program, as I have an 8 minute long video on it. But you see, I don't just want any door system, I wanted my door system. So instead of following along with my own tutorial and making a simple door system, I instead program an entire reusable interaction system that makes programming interactables easy. That totally did not take me way too long to write. Anyways, I can now interact with the doors, but they don't open. So after some more programming, I hook up the interactables advanced to the door, and depending on what side of the door was interacted from, the door will open in the opposite direction. After all, I do want this to be very realistic. Oh yeah, I decide to flex my programming knowledge by using the state pattern. For a door. Editor Nuber here. Every time I say the state pattern from now on, I'm talking about state machines. But it does work, so I don't have a reason to change it. In this game, there is player, door, and pew stick. What else does a game of this classification need? Well, if you guessed incorrectly, the answer is enemies. Oh boy. I've programmed enemy AI before for hit classics such as VOAL, Sierra Sandstorm, and Brutality of War. You know, very finished, polished games that were released. So surely programming AI can't be that complicated, right? Here's the thing, programming AI is not the complicated part. The complicated part is programming AI that's smarter and more interesting than a box of rocks, and doing that took me way too long. I don't know how to transition to it, so... I reprogrammed the enemy AI like three separate times, each time the AI getting more advanced, and the current implementation I have now is by far the one I'm happiest with. So you may be asking right now, what advanced programming pattern did you use to program these AI? It's simple, I use the state pattern. I know, I'm a filthy for not using behavior trees, but the behave package for Godot scares me, okay? And I'm familiar with the state pattern, so don't judge me. And to be completely fair, most AI anyways are just a bunch of if statements. I mean, look at this. This is the if statement tree for the current implementation of the AI. Let's discuss some of the highly strategic things this AI does, and what makes them interesting. In Exhibit 1A, we have the state known universally as idle, as you could probably guess if you have at least one half-functional brain cell, unlike me, is that in this state, the AI does nothing. They're not dead, they just stand around. In Exhibit 1AA, we have the quite particular state that I have named Move to Domination Point. If you're not familiar with CQB terminology, a domination point is just a point of domination. I really don't know how to explain it. The state did not involve me creating an entire domination point finder system just to move to a corner of the room. That would never be me. Uh, so yeah, I did that, and it works, surprisingly, and the AI can find domination points that have a direct line of sight to the player and move to them. And if the AI happens to see the player while moving, the AI will turn and fire at the player while still moving to the domination point. That's what the strafe to domination point state is for. The other states are also pretty self-explanatory, so I won't dive into their technical implementation. Now, there is player, weapons, and enemy. A little bit of play, but there's still one important thing missing. Whatever could it be? Levels. Levels are the thing that I'm missing, and I can say confidently that I do not like level design. Levels are like, totally cool. There are places where there are enemies and objectives and stuff, but my game in its current state doesn't have any levels, and I don't know how to design levels. One may think that the responsible thing to do is learn single player level design, like what I did in the previous video with multiplayer level design. But you see, I am not the sharpest, so instead of trying to improve myself, I've watched like three YouTube videos, decide I'm an expert, and immediately start designing levels. I know, I know, you learn from doing, but I'm not learning anything because I'm not making mistakes. Jeez, I sound so self-centered when I say that. My process of designing levels isn't the fastest, or the smartest, or even that good. 
but I tried it once and it worked, so I will spew it here. First, write down the concept of the level in the text document, then make a room flowchart. This does not have to reflect the size or placement of each room, just what rooms connect to other rooms. Then, load up your level creating tool of choice. Since I'm doing exclusively blockouts, I use Godot CSG. And then you do some magic to turn your flowchart and ideas into a playable 3D level. For a more experienced level designer, this might work a little bit better than it did for me, the one time I tested it. But it's still infinitely better compared to when I tried to draw a layout and make a map after that. So I'd say, progress. It was during this process that I learned that I really do not like level design. I can program all the features in the world and still, I mean, utilize all the art. But when it comes to making levels, I just cannot enjoy myself doing it. And it's for this reason that I completely changed the direction of my game. As of this point in time, I was thinking that the game single player would be like Spec Ops from the older Call of Duty games or like Ready or Not, if you're familiar with that. Where each level is not really connected to a story that's explicitly stated nor are part of a campaign. Instead, they are their own individual missions with their own objectives. So one map could be a rescue the informant in an office building, while another could be eliminate all threats in an area. And at first, I thought this was a great game design, since I do like games where I can load up a quick match and complete a level. But I had seemed to have forgot about how much the level design would be required to make this work. That's why I'm considering changing the entire design of my game, but that's for the next episode. It's probably going to be a, a bit before the next devlog, since I have made barely any progress towards my plans, and in order to script these videos, I actually have to have stuff to show and talk about, and I just don't have that yet. Subscribe. What I'm working on may or may not involve procedural generation.